Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Wilhelm Scream and welcome back to another day in Warhammer 40k Space Marines 2. For more news and intel, and in today's video we are going to be discussing the best XP farms for both new and solo players. The game released only yesterday. I actually have been playing since the pre-launch and there are a whole bunch of tips and tricks that I have picked up along the way, including a pretty major glitch that I think are going to give every new and solo player the leg up. A whole bunch of Specific things to note about difficulty as well as what you can do as a solo player and what you're not going to be able to do or avoid as a solo player, especially when you first start playing versus maybe when you get a group or you get to a slightly higher level. And again, stick around for the glitch because that's going to be a major thing to note for all level play and I think this is going to go under the radar for quite some time and probably won't be patched so you know let's just hope that the devs don't catch on too quickly but it is a fairly small thing but it can actually help out quite a bit there's also a few different things I wanted to note as far as how to actually just maneuver in the game that I think will be very helpful and some things that you wouldn't know as you were first starting off or even if you've been playing for about a day or so if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and turn on the bell to post notifications so you never miss out on any future Warhammer 40k Space Marines 2 content like this. You can also follow me on Instagram or Twitter, they'll be linked in the description box down below. Any of those things also enter you into any future giveaways on this YouTube channel. We do one every 1,000 subscribers, so you never want to miss out, we're almost to 82,000. And of course, when and if we reach 100,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel, we'll be giving away an Xbox or PlayStation, or a video card if you play on PC. So now, as far as XP farming goes for solo and new players, or really any player, I think, though you can really scale this up as you get further along in the game, is to do either the second or fourth missions. Now, these are, of course, after you've done the campaign and you're just starting to try to level up your different classes in the PvE playlist. The reason for doing those two specific missions is they're really fast. That's bottom line. I actually find that the second mission is the quickest, and I would do these at either the lowest level difficulty or the second to lowest level difficulty. Now, there's one thing I wanted to note as I've played several runs on both difficulties, that when you do it on the lowest level difficulty, the odds that you're going to be doing it completely by yourself and you're only going to have bots to help you is much higher. If you do it on the second lowest level difficulty, it takes a little bit longer as things are a little bit harder, but the odds of getting match made are significantly higher. And in fact, I haven't ever done it at that second highest difficulty before I actually got paired with a couple of players. Now that makes the whole process go a lot easier. So if you do it at the lowest level difficulty, you could get paired with players, but the odds that you're going to just be with bots, which though you can run through the mission quite a bit faster, will actually, I think, be to your detriment once you get to the boss. Because even at the lowest level difficulty, when you're first starting off as a solo player, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but doable. However, if you do it at the second lowest, I actually think... Most people will get the idea of what we're going to be doing, which is essentially just running past all the enemies, as you can really run past almost every enemy just by dodge rolling or just running, but I would suggest dodge rolling, which is something I'm going to talk about in a second, to this point, and then you can do everything else to the end, to the boss. There's a couple of little objective points where you have to deposit some bombs and stuff like that, but you can get through those just by doing the objective point. You don't actually have to kill any of the enemies. This is the only area where you're going to really need to do a huge wave of enemies. But once it's through, you're on to the boss and you're done. Now, if you're doing this at the lowest level difficulty, say with a group, you could probably run through this and I would say under 10 minutes. It's going to net you a lot of XP. If you're doing this with a match made group on the second or lowest, it's probably going to be a little bit longer than that, but maybe not much, especially on the lower level difficulty. If you're doing it on the second lowest, it's 
going to be a little bit faster, but I found doing it as a solo player versus doing it on that with hopefully a couple of players with you, because you're not going to get really any bots there, maybe one bot, is actually about the same. So even as you're starting off, even if you haven't leveled your weapons up that much, you should be okay doing it on that second lowest. And just run through it as you would, as you see me doing here, and your teammates may get the idea and do the same thing, or they might just end up killing everything along the way, in which case, wherever you die, you will respawn so long as two of them are alive, or at least one of your teammates is alive, and the odds of wiping before you actually get to the boss are very low in this particular mission, or really in the fourth mission, but I still prefer this one. So you can see just dodge rolling is a huge thing. This not only backs up all the enemies around you, you really will not take damage from almost any level enemy unless it's like a wave attack, which you'll see at the boss when you're rolling. If you're sprinting, you will take damage. You can get hit, things can target you, jump on the back of your character, but if you're rolling, you're good. So just roll everywhere until you get to the boss encounter. It also, I think, is the fastest way to just travel through the mission. So as you can see in this clip, I was playing with, I believe, just two bots, and this was on the lowest level difficulty, but in the later clip, I did this with teammates. A couple of times I would die at the end when I got to the assembly point. No bother. They either came and were able to revive me in time, or I was able to just respawn on that point because they were alive and were actually a lot higher level than I was at the time of doing this. So that's it for XP farming. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was a weapons glitch. Now, as you're going to be going through these missions, you're going to be leveling up your weapons. Now, there's different things for PvP and PvE. PvE is going to be things that actually make the weapon more deadly and uh, make it stronger, increase your survivability on your character, but the weapons essentially have a skill tree the exact same way as... Um, your character does. For anybody who's watching my channel from Destiny 2, it's a pretty much the exact same thing that we're used to. Maybe just a little bit more in-depth, and you have to unlock. It's only one skill tree on three different types of weapons for each slot, but overall, gives you a good bunch of options. But the thing that you want to note is the Adamant Restoration perk. Now, this specific perk, when you get to under 30% health essentially gives you almost all your uh, ammo back. Now you can just kind of glitch that out by if you're under 30% you can just swap weapons after you fire and it will always give you your ammo back. So it's a little thing to note but a pretty major thing. So you can even self-damage and get your weapons back so long as you just switch weapons, you will get all the ammo back for that weapon. Now this will help a lot, believe me, especially as a solo player, you do run out of ammo quite a bit. And even though that this is sort of a melee game, uh, weapons are important. And if you're playing the heavy class like I was, they're the most important. So just make sure that you look and see if you are playing. I believe there's two different classes. The sniper is the thing I think most people are making use of when it comes to this glitch on this perk. Um, that it does have, if you're picking either the sniper or the heavy, that particular weapon that you're using has that perk on it because not all of them do. I believe it's one for the sniper and two different ones for the heavy. The last thing I wanted to discuss as far as combat was concerned that's a bit of a cheese when fighting not only the big enemies but also large waves of the small ones is the guard effect. Now, you will get all these prompts that tell you when to guard in order to do a cool animation on both the smaller enemies as well as the bigger ones. And in the case of the bigger ones, you actually need to do it in order to prevent getting hit really hard by them. But you don't have to wait for that to happen. You don't need to wait for the prompt in order to do a guard. And in many cases, actually just doing a guard and a roll will clear a 
whole bunch of enemies in your vicinity. Maybe not killing them, but at least pushing them very far away from you. This gives you sort of a go-to AoE ability at any time. You can also guard just randomly in the middle of a fight, and you might actually get an animation on another enemy or do a execute animation or get the prompt to do an execute animation just by chance. I found this happened quite a bit, so don't be afraid to guard even if the game doesn't tell you to do that. And lastly, for anybody looking for all the armory data locations, I'm going to have a link to a website that has them all in the description box down below, so don't be afraid to check that out at your leisure. And that is going to conclude all the information for today's video. Hopefully you found something in this video helpful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, as I said before. If you've watched till this point in the video, you can also leave a hashtag Space Marines in the comment section for another entry into the next giveaway that I discussed at the beginning. For this video, remember I do a secret hashtag on all videos, so if you haven't done this on a previous piece of content on this channel, you can always go back and check out another video and, of course, do it again. And once more, I'm Wilhelm Scream, and of course, we will see you next time.